Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. So I've been out for a number of weeks being busy with all sorts of classes and courses and whatnot. But as you can see, I am back. Now I'm happy you are as well because we're starting with a whole new series of videos. Um, you guys asked me to do less time lapse and more in depth videos. So that's what we're going to do. Now, today's video is something that I've been thinking about for a number of weeks, and it might be super confusing. Uh, hopefully it isn't. Um, but the reason why I'm doing this video is to kind of explain to people the difference between 2D and 3D and why you shouldn't look at it as strict as most people do. OK, now. What does 2D and 3D mean anyway? Well, um, you might think, hey, this is super basic, but trust me when I tell you that a lot of people don't understand the process. If you are calling yourself an artist of any kind, it is important for you to understand, yeah? So let's start with the human perspective and then we'll look at the mathematical perspective, okay? From a human perspective, most humans have two eyes that function, yeah? Now, if you have two eyes that function, then you have a left eye looking at an object and a right eye looking at an object, both from a different angle. So basically, you're seeing two images of the same object. Now, in the case of a human, we're talking about stereoscopic view. Yeah. What your brain does is they take these two. It takes these two images, it combines them together and it gives you one representation of a viewpoint of that object with depth to it. OK, now that's kind of the human definition. You can see depth. Now, if you go back in the day to, let's say, the early Disney animations or drawings or paintings or, you know, <clears throat> all of that, what you're looking at is a flat surface. You're looking at drawings made on cells, on piece of paper, on that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's all completely 2D. Now, it might look realistic because the artist added, you know, um, mid tones, high tones, dark tones, lighting and all that. And it has the, uh, the illusion of depth, but it's not really there. Right. But keep in mind, that's how that process works. It's on a flat surface from a mathematical point of view. Um, you can explain it this way. I opened up Maya here and we're looking at a square. Yeah. Now, if you look at that square and you look at the bottom left corner here, you see a green Y going up. You see a red X going to the right. OK, now looking at this object right here, and I'll just go to vertex mode. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. There we go. Yeah. OK, so I got this yellow point down here and let me just jump in here. Yeah. And I want to define where that point is in space. Think of it like this. You have to explain to a friend, um, you know, hey, there's a red ball floating in the middle of a room. Where is it? Yeah. You can say, hey, you know, you start at a room, you go to the wall, you do two steps to the right, three steps up, something like that. Yeah. So looking at this right here, if this is our origin being zero, zero. Yeah. So again, Y going up, X going to the right. That would be zero, zero. So this point right here would be one to the right and one up. Yeah. Now, if this is Y and that's X, then it's OK. You need to go one positive X to the right, one positive up on Y. And, you know, if you had math in school, you know how this works. Yeah. So you have an X grid and a Y grid. Now, the X grid works both ways. You can also go negative one and you would be over here, right? Or negative Y and it would be down there. So this X axis goes from left to right on the horizontal. The Y goes top down. And already you see, hey, I got two axes, right? So two as in 2D. You got two dimensions, width and height, yeah? Looking at this from an entertainment point of view, let's say games or, or movies or whatnot, this makes total sense because if you're uh, sitting in a cinema looking at a movie, regardless of how it's made, what you're looking at is 2D. It's a flat screen, right? Same thing with a game and so forth. Now, what happens when this becomes 3D? Then you got an additional axis, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is go into my perspective view and it's kind of hard to see, but I'll try anyway. Yeah, 
Down here, you see we got X, we got Y, and we got a blue one, and that's Z or Z, depending on where you live, yeah, and how you pronounce that. So let's put it back to the original position, yeah. So you got X going uh, to the right, you got Y going up, and in this case, you got Z going forward. So suddenly, I have three dimensions, okay. I hope that makes sense so far, okay. So if that's the case, then each point here is a vertex. And if you've got multiple, it's a vertices. Yeah, so it's a vertex. If you've got two vertices and you connect them to one another, you have an edge. And that would be this guy. And if you got three or more edges, then you would have a face. And that's this guy. Now, if you're a 3D artist, you know all this stuff, yeah? Okay, so um, now we understand the mathematical difference between 2D and 3D. We also understand the human difference or the perspective difference between 2D and 3D. Now it gets confusing. Okay, so a 3D artist does 3D stuff and a 2D artist does 2D stuff. Let me give you some examples. How about a photographer? Is that 2D or 3D? Well, the object that the photographer is looking at is most likely 3D. If you take a photo of a human being, that's a 3D object. You capture that on film, which is 2D. You print it in a magazine, which is 2D. Okay, how about a, uh, a painter? Let's say a painter paints something on a round wall, right? Is that 2D or 3D? You get the idea, yeah? So there's a mix between 2D and 3D everywhere. Uh, look at, for example, things like matte painting. Matte painting is used in a whole bunch of movies back in the day and even still today, right? Matte painting is completely 2D in a 3D world. Look at the games that are, by definition, if they are made in 3D, right? They look 3D, they feel 3D, but you're looking at a flat screen. Now, the reason why I wanted to explain this is because the artist picks the tools. The tools don't pick the artist. And why am I saying that? Well, a lot of young people that start off in 3D say, hey, uh, I see uh, people making 3D stuff for games and they're using Maya, so I have to learn Maya. It doesn't work like that. I mean, you can use a whole number of tools to do whatever you want to do, yeah? Don't get caught up in the whole Maya, Blender, 3ds Max thing. Use whatever tools you need to create your art, right? And by doing so, you will become much more versatile as an artist. Combine things. Use photography when working in 3D. Use painting, use drawing, use sketching, any of those things. And that brings me to a question that I get all the time. Will artists or 3D artists stay relevant in the future now that we have all these scanning and automated and, you know, artificial intelligence stuff going on? Absolutely. Now, why is that? Well, your primary role as an artist is to tell a story, right? To convey an emotion, whether it's, hey, buy our new car or whether it's, you know, something like Toy Story or whatever. Yeah, that's your primary job. So your ability as an artist to tell a story um, basically makes sure that you have a job in the future. And the more skills you have to tell that story, the better artist you are. So let go of that whole idea of I have to do everything in 3D, I have to do everything in 2D, because at the end of the day, when the product is done, people are looking at it in a 2D perspective, yeah? unless suddenly we got holograms and all that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, let me know in the comments what type of videos you want to see uh, moving forward. I'm glad to be back. I hope you guys are glad that I'm back as well. Uh, please let me know in the comments. And that said, that's it for today. Uh, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.